Okay, let's go ahead and go through the process of prepping uh, photos that we've taken to use as orthographic images for a 3D model that we'd like to make. And so what I have right here, you can see as I'm previewing these, is I've taken a photo of the top and the bottom, the left and the right sides, and the front and the back of this old Argus camera. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get started by um, dragging the front of this camera just right here into Photoshop uh, so that it opens that document up. You you know, you can just, from Photoshop, you can go ahead and, and go up to File and hit Open and then select where you have the file saved. It doesn't matter as long as we get it opened up in Photoshop. And the orientation of this particular photo isn't how I want it. I actually want to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. So I'll click on Image and I'll come down to Adjust. Uh, or I'm sorry, I'll come down to Image Rotation and select 90 degrees counterclockwise. All right, and there we go. Um, now, if you look, there's the perspective's a little skewed on this photograph. Um, and we can see that when we, if you hit Command or Control R, you will turn on your artboard rulers. And if I click on this left artboard ruler and drag, I'm going to drag out a guide. I want to line this guide up so that it will line up with this upper corner. <clears throat> now I'm going to drag a guide down from the top by clicking on the artboard ruler and dragging it down. All right, so the top is, is pretty parallel. It's exactly where I want it to be. And now I'm going to drag another one over from the left artboard ruler and line it up with this corner. And you can see that there's a little bit of a disconnect with the perspective on this photograph that I took. Um, you know, you can see that the camera had a little bit of a tilt. Or the, I was a little closer to this particular edge of the camera than I was to this one right up in here. So what we need to do is we need to use Photoshop to actually um, correct the perspective on this and get it all set up so that we can take it into Maya and set it up as an image plane. So what I'm going to do is I will, you can press M as in Mickey um, on your keyboard to grab the um, rectangular marquee tool or you can just select it right over here from your tool palette. And I'm going to draw a generous selection over top of the camera. And I'm going to hit Command or Control Shift J, depending on if you're on a Mac or a PC. And what it's going to do is it's going to extract that selection from the layer that it was previously on. Now we don't need the background layer anymore, so go ahead and click on that, and then click on your trash can icon down at the bottom to get rid of it. Now just to keep things a little bit more orderly, I'll double click on the layer name and just name this Front. And with each layer that we add to this document, we'll go ahead and um, you know and name it as it corresponds with its point of view. So um, what I'm going to do now is with the layer selected, I'll hit Command or Control T, and that will take me to free transform mode. Now in the free transform mode, you can actually see this bounding box that is now going around our layer. And uh, in the corners, you'll see little individual handles, you know, and halfway along the top, you'll see another handle. Halfway along either side, you'll see another handle, and the same along the bottom. If I grab that handle and I click on it and I drag back and forth, it will, cons it will scale it horizontally as per the opposite edge. So if I grab over here and start scaling it, you can see that this edge will stay in place. The same thing at the top and bottom. If I grab a diagonal one, It'll, it'll start adjusting the scale as per the opposite corner. Now, I can just hit Command or Control Z to go back to where I was before. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to scale it perfectly diagonally or perfectly horizontally or vertically. Um, we actually just want to bring in these bottom corners. And the easiest way to do that is if you mouse over that lower left hand or that lower right hand corner, I'm going to press Command on my keyboard. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the hotcut key is on a PC. It's either going to be Command or Control. Um, but you can see that the icon or the cursor changes um, from that diagonal arrow to just a little white um, selection icon. I can click on that handle, and you can see that I can actually now transform it as per that individual handle. All right, so I hit Command-Z. Now, if I hold down command and hold down shift simultaneously it will constrain it either to vertical or horizontal transitions and so what I want to do is, is hold down command and shift and just 
bring that corner in laterally just to where we get the side lining up with this guy. And let's go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Okay, it might just take a little bit going back and forth because sometimes when you adjust one, you know, it throws the other off like in this upper corner. So let's go ahead and drag that one back. Same thing on the other side. Just a little bit. And when you have it where you want it, go ahead and press return on your keyboard. Now you can see as we were adjusting these lower corners and fixing that perspective, it actually brought the image down away from our guide up at the top. So I'll press V on my keyboard so that I grab the selection tool and then I can use my arrow keys just to nudge that back up to where it's resting along our upper guide. So now that everything's squared out, I'm going to click on the ruler on the top and I'm going to drag it down and get it to where it lines up with the bottom of our camera. All right. So what we've done is in the guides now, we've defined what the width of this object is and what the height of that is. And so when we use some of our other references, we can go ahead and scale it as per those particular dimensions. So I'm going to go back over um, to my finder window. This time I'm going to work on the top image. So I'll just right click on it, do open with, and select Adobe Photoshop. Just do whatever you need to do to get it into Photoshop. Now that it's open here, I'll hit Command or Control A. So that selects my entire, you know, actually let's do it this way. Let's just do a drag selection. You know, so I'm doing that with the marquee tool. So I'll drag a selection over top of my image. And I'll hit Command or Control C to copy that. And we'll go back over to our other file that we have open here. And let's go ahead and paste that with Command or Control V is in Victor, uh, just to paste that into this uh, pre-existing document. Now I want to change the orientation of this image. I want to flip it 180 degrees, or I shouldn't say flip because that would give us a mirror image. I want to rotate it 180 degrees. That is most easily done in free transform mode. So uh, before we do anything, let's, let's just double click on the layer name and we'll name this one top so we can differentiate it from the front layer. Now that we've done that, I have the layer selected. I'll hit Command or Control T. All right, and so we see the handles, we see the bounding box. We have this little crosshair right in the center. That is your anchor point. And when we rotate, it's going to rotate around the anchor point. But I'm going to manually enter in a value right up here at the top um, of 180 degrees. And go ahead and press return, and that'll commit that to this field, and then press return again, and that will commit that to the layer. So now that we've done that, I'll press V on my keyboard so I get the, the select or the move tool, and I'll just drag my artwork down so that we can use this, this corner as a point of reference once again. Okay, so you can see now that you know the width of this. Uh, this top image exceeds the width of the of the front image that we had established earlier. So we need to scale that. You can also see that you know this this upper edge of the camera for the back side of the camera deviates a little bit from this line. So we need to rotate it. So we need to do some scaling. We need to do some rotating, and also um, just correct the perspective once again. So I will hit. Uh, command T on my keyboard to go back into free transform mode. And this time, let's take the anchor point and click on it and drag it, and we will place it right along those guides. Now, I'll zoom in a couple of times using Command um, or Control plus and minus will zoom out, and I will just take that anchor point and just more precisely place it. Now, Command or Control minus zoom me out a little bit more. And now that we've placed the anchor point right there, when we rotate the layer, it will rotate around that point. So rotate your layer just ever so carefully so that the back side of the image ends up falling in the, just parallel or in line with that upper guide. Now also, because we place the anchor point right up here at this intersection of these guides, um, if you hold down Alt and Shift on your keyboard, um, the shift will make everything scale uniformly, and then the alt will make a scale around the anchor point. So just click on one of your corners and drag it in.
until you get it scaled where you want. So now I'm kind of eyeballing this upper corner and you can see that this corner down here is falling out of perspective. And that's a fix as simple as what we were doing previously on the front image, where if I hold down Alt, or I'm sorry, Command, while I'm mousing over this lower uh, left-hand corner, and Shift, and then I just bring that in a little bit. All right, you can see that, um, you know, we, we're, we're constraining it the way that we want it to. Actually, I'll do it on the other side here just a little bit because when we adjusted this corner, it kind of counter-adjusted that. Maybe if you zoom in, it's a little easier to tell exactly what's going on. Okay, now um, I'm just gonna tap my up arrow key just to nudge the image back up because we're starting to come away from this upper line. I'm gonna drag down a new guide, and you can drag down these guides when you're still in free transform mode, and line it up with one of your corners just to make sure that everything's squaring off the way it should be. And you can see that the perspective is still, you know, it's keeping us off a little bit right here. So I'll hold down Alt and Shift and pull this down just a hair. All right, and just kind of tweak it little by little until you get it right precisely where you want it to be. All right, so I'm satisfied with that. So I'll press return to go ahead and commit those changes. And so now not only have we delineated the width of the object and the height of the object, but because we're looking at it from the top and we drug down that additional guide, now we're looking at the depth of the object right there. Okay, so I will toggle back over to um, my finder window. And this time I'm going to grab the right side of the object. And I'll right click on that, come down to open with, and select. Oh, I selected something I didn't mean to. Give me a second, and I will close Adobe Fireworks. Right, right click on that, open with Photoshop. Okay, I'll drag another selection using the marquee tool. So that's this one. Um, over top of my camera, I'll copy that selection with Command or Control C and um, come back over to the front image just by clicking on its tab right up here in my viewport and Command or Control V to paste that in place. Now, once again, it's upside down. If we um, look at the actual image, this is a little mount on the bottom, this smooth um, barrel, whereas this, this upper one that has little grooves on the side, that's one that you would actually twist uh, for options with your fingers. Um, actually, if we hide that, you can see that is this particular dial right there. So that tells us that we need to rotate this image 180 degrees. So once again, I'll press Command or Control T to go into free transform mode, enter in a value of 180 right there. All right, press return twice to commit that. And now, um, let's go ahead and take our camera and this time I'm going to kind of do all the scaling and everything based off of this upper corner. So I'll just use the arrow keys with, this, with the move tool selected. Uh, the shortcut key once again is V for that. Use the arrow keys just to kind of nudge it in place. And then you can see that the scale and the rotation and some of the perspective is off, so we'll adjust all of that. So once again, Command or Control T. I'll take my anchor point and I will place it right up here. Um, zoom in a couple of times with Command or Control, or plus or minus. All right, make sure the placement of that anchor point is a little bit more precise. All right, and as I, well actually, I will rotate this first to kind of bring the top of this in alignment right here. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it around that point. So I'll, I'll hold down Alt and Shift and scale it so that we can match the pre-established height. Okay, and so now that we've established or matched the pre-established height, and we'll bring in some of these corners. So I'll hold down Command and Shift bring that corner in. 
All right, Command and Shift and drag this one down just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna drag in another guide from the side um, to line up right here, just to make sure that um, we're kind of getting that depth scale correctly because you can see we're departing from it a little bit down there. Uh, Command and Shift, kind of push that in. You know, do a little finessing because as we tweak one corner, it can't affect the other corner. Um, I'll use arrow keys to kind of nudge this back up. So we're back in alignment over here. Zoom in. Take this corner. Bring it in and down just ever so slightly. Okay, when you're satisfied with where that's at, go ahead and press return to commit that. Now, if you wanna be extra precise, um, you know, we established the depth of the camera right here, but we also established the depth of the camera right in there. Now, chances are they're going to be pretty close, but if you wanna double check it, go into free transform mode, rotate this 90 degrees, and then you can just kind of mouse that into position and actually you know looking at this it's, it's interesting we're not as deep from the side as we were from the top so let's just go ahead and recompensate for that so I'll drag my anchor point down to this guide that I'm lining the back side of the camera up with and this time I'm gonna hold down alt and I'm instead of grabbing in one of the corners um, I'm gonna hold down alt and drag up from the top All right, then I can go ahead and press return. And now the depth of the camera from the side matches the depth of the camera from the top. And I'll hold down, or hit Command T and rotate that back negative 90 degrees to kind of undo the um, rotation that we just did. Hope that makes sense. Um, be sure to name this right, you know, this layer, just so we can, once again, differentiate it from the other layers. And um, if you have other points of view, you know, if you have a left side, if you have a bottom, if you have a rear side, um, you know, you can kind of go through the same hurdles to make sure that all the, the, the scale and the rotation and everything of all your different points of view all match up prior to taking it into, um, into Maya. The last thing I'm going to do is right here, I'm on the right. Uh, layer, I'll go ahead and use the marquee tool that's pressing M on your keyboard. Uh, just drag a selection over the camera right here, and I will hit Command C to copy that. And I'll hit Command or Control N, as in new, to, to create a new document. And when you make a copy in uh, Photoshop and then you go to paste or you create a new document, it will create the new document taking into account the width and the height of the copy or the selection we just made. And so if we hit OK and we just paste um, in this document, you know, the document is already set to the right scale. Now I'll hit Command or Control E as in Edward to flatten that down, um, the layer one, into the background image. And then I'll, hit, I'll go up to File and come down to Save As. And we want to make sure that we save this as a um, we want to make sure that we save this as a JPEG. So in this folder that I was referencing from, I'll just create a new folder and call this prepped orthos. Hit create and then save this one as side. And I, you could be side underscore right, um, just to be a little bit more specific. And go ahead and hit save and then close that, we don't need that anymore. So I'll go ahead and toggle the visibility off on the right layer by clicking on the little eyeball. Now this time I'm gonna come down to the top layer, press M to grab the marquee tool, and then do a drag selection over the top of that. All right, just get what I want, copy that, Command or Control C, Command or Control N to create a new document, 
in Command or Control V to paste it, Command or Control E to flatten it down, and then File, Save As, Top. All right, you want to make sure that we're still saving it as a JPEG. Hit Save. Okay, and we can close that one, disable that layer, and do a new drag selection over the front. Make sure we have the front layer selected. We'll copy that, create a new document, paste it, flatten it, save as front dot jpeg all right and then we hop over to Maya okay now that I'm here in Maya the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set or create a new project so we'll click on file I'll come down to the project window and I'll click on new and we'll go ahead and give this a name and I can call this assignment to as this corresponds with what you are doing um, and just to make this easy to find I'm gonna just uh, I'll throw this in my downloads folder because my desktop is a mess at the particular moment hit choose and then press accept so when I toggle over to the finder window what I can do is I'll go to my um, downloads folder and then I have the assignment to and because of what I just did it created a, uh, the appropriate project structure I'll go to my source images folder and then I can copy all of my orthos into that folder now if you look um, I pause the video real fast and I went through and I finished uh, creating you know all the different points of view so I have a back I have a bottom I have a front left right and top um, I'm just gonna take all of those and um, drag them into my source images folder so that way they're already in the right place so that when I come back over here into Maya and start creating image planes and referencing where these images are at by default Maya knows where to go to find them so I'll click on create to get started come down to free image plane and it'll throw it right here in the center of my grid now currently I'm set up over here in my um, in my channel box editor if I go over to the attribute editor, there should be the tab on the side. If the tab is not on the side, you can click on um, the corresponding button up at the top to be able to find that to access it. So attribute editor, you click on that and then you'll see this field, image name with a little folder. This just shows where we can link to it. So I'm going to start by selecting the front and press open. Okay, and it'll go ahead and place that in my document for me. Now what I'm going to do is create a, another image plane. So create free image plane. And you know by default that one's selected. So you can see we, you know, we're already in the attribute editor. We're already where we need to go to link to the next reference. Um, so I click on the folder. This one I'm going to select the right side and press open. And it appears right here. And you can see that those two image planes are actually clipping each other. Um, by clipping, it means they occupy the same space. And um, that's why when I rotate around it, you know, it kind of alternates between one image and the other in a weird strobing effect. What we need to do is we just need to take this image plane right here, all right, this side image plane, go over into the channel box editor, and we just need to rotate it 90 degrees along the Y axis. Axis. Sorry, my bad. Mispronunciation there. Okay. Now the next thing that we will do is I will click on create come down to free image plane we have a new one in there go back to the attribute editor click on our folder and let's go ahead and grab the top view press open go to our channel box editor alright now if you're not seeing the options the, the regular attributes that you want um, go ahead and just click off of that image plane and then reselect it again and then you'll see the translate, the rotate, and the scale attributes all there. All right, so because it's currently occupying the same space as the front, what we need to do is we need to rotate it along the x-axis. The reason why I know that is because I'm looking down at this little um, referential orientation um, UI element down here in the lower left-hand corner of our workspace. So we'll rotate this. 90 degrees along the x-axis actually it looks like it needs to rotate negative 90 degrees okay 
And you can see that there's a misregistration between this reference. Oh, you know what? I accidentally rotated both image planes. So I'm not sure which one I have selected. Okay, that's the front. I don't want to have the front selected. Um, if you're having a hard time selecting the image plane that you want, you can click on this third icon down um, in, in terms of the, the way that we view our viewports. So the first is the perspective view, the second is the four quadrant view, and the fourth is a perspective view and a object outliner. Now the object outliner kind of gives us a list view of all the objects that are part of our scene. You know, just clicking on this by default because, you know, the first and the third image planes are the front and the top image planes are occupying the same space. Maya doesn't know which one we want to select. So in the outliner, we can actually select image plane three and then we can come in and rotate that on a negative 90. And then we will get, um, you know, that one oriented where we want it to be. So looking at it from the top, um, you can see that there's a misregistration between the side image plane and the top image plane. Um, so all I'll do is I'm just going to manually come in and just going to scooch that over until they're occupying the same space. All right, let's look at it from the front. Make sure that all three points of view are kind of are in alignment with each other. It's a little trickier, you know, because we have the bezel on this camera and then we have this little lip. So it looks like this one could go down just a hair. All right, and so that's looking good. So what I'm going to do now that I have all these placed where I want them to be is I'm just going to manually kind of push them out of the way to the edge of my grid. All right, they shouldn't be getting in each other's way about right there. Okay, now, but I, you know, I had six uniquely individual sides to this object, so what we need to do is we actually need to, um, you know, create some additional image planes for the rear, for the bottom, and for the left side of this model. Now, before I do that, the first, what I'm going to do is I'll just drag a selection over all three image planes, and I'm going to add them to their own layer. So in the channel box and layer editor, we come right down here to this area, and I click on this little icon. It looks like a little piece of paper with a ball on it and a little star. So if I click on that, I created a new layer and added these three um, image planes to that layer by default. So if I hit the V button, I can toggle those three off and on. And um, now what I can do if I want is I can go ahead and you know, press this uh, right box to get a T that shows the objects in wireframe mode. If I press it again with the R, I don't know what the R stands for, but what basically what that is, is it means that the layer is locked and so we cannot grab any of those objects. Okay, so I'll click on Create and I'm gonna come down to Free Image Plane. And I will go to the Attribute Editor and go ahead and place this. And this time I'm going to place the back side and hit open. All right, and the back side should actually be the same dimensions as the front side um, because I just used the established height and width of the front so that it, its placement should be the same as this one so we don't need to reorient uh, this reference as per the others. So we've placed the back side, cre and now I'll create a new one, create free image plane, and click on the little um, icon or folder icon. Now we'll select the left, hit open, right? Since they're occupying the same space, we need to rotate this one 90 degrees on the Y axis. Um, I can manually do that in the channel box editor to make sure that it's specifically 90 degrees there. Now I'll click on create, come down free image plane, go back to the attribute editor, click on the little folder icon and select bottom and hit open. Okay, now um, this one's going to be hard to select again, so I'll go to image plane 6 right over here, make sure that I have the right one selected. We want to rotate this one um, also 90 degrees.
or negative 90. You know, and actually, just kind of looking and comparing its orientation with the top view, I actually think we need to rotate it along the z-axis 180 degrees. So that the, uh, the lens ends up being in the same position as it is when viewed from the top. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and um, just reposition things. Oops, make sure I grab, I'm trying to reposition the left view. Drag that off here to the side of the grid. All right, let's go ahead and actually, you know, before I drag that off, I'm going to make sure that everything else is lining up. We'll grab this one and position that like so. Okay, now I'll drag the top view up in here into this area. I'll grab the left side view over here into this area and now I'll grab the back view and move it over here into this area. Alright, so we have all six sides depicted as image planes. And then I can take the three that we have uh, that I haven't added to a layer that are new for this scene and I can add them to their own layer all right and we can lock that so they're in place and I'll double click on layer 2 and I'll rename this um, let's do back underscore left underscore bottom um, because we can't use spaces, we can't use commas in the names of the layers. We'll hit save. And then with layer one, I'll double click on that so I can go ahead and change its name. And we'll call that one, let's see, top underscore right underscore front. And hit save. So we know which is which. So when we're referencing one set of image planes, we can be modeling with, you know, with... Um, the back, the left, and the bottom turned off. And then when we are modeling from the other points of view, we can turn the other ones off. Okay. Now one last thing that I'll just show you real fast is um, these, these three um, points of view are what are represented right here in, uh, you know, in our top ortho camera view, our front ortho camera view, and our side ortho camera view. And you'll see when we turn on the back, the left, and the bottom, that what is happening is, is these are actually in front of the grid where the model would be. We can change the orientation of our orthographic viewpoints by in the, um, the top view. In the viewport submenu, I'll click on view, and I'll come down to predefined bookmarks, and I'm going to change this from top to bottom. And so now we're looking up. Um, from the back view, I can, you know, come to this viewport, click on the view, come down to predefined bookmarks, and I'm going to change this one to back. And in this one right over here, I'll click on view, come down to predefined bookmarks, and choose left. So now the cameras are, are basically flipped um, as per the previous orientation. So if we toggle back here, now you'll have to reset your viewports. You know, but really get started modeling from this point of view, and then as you get in and start doing the detail work on your opposite sides, then go ahead and flip those. You know, once your right side, your front, and your top, everything's good to go and everything's in place.